one. Hello there and welcome. Happy New Year to all of us. Happy New Year to everyone. And the greetings to all of us and greetings to everyone. This is Africa Online Media Corporation with its Sunday regular program today. And we'll be talking about lessons learned from 2021 and New Year resolutions for 2022, if you are into that. Again, greetings and welcome. Our co-host is on New Year Travels and will be back as soon as she can make it. So for now, let us get the show started. Before we do, let me do this. Yes, okay, everything is in place. And January is the first month of the year in both the Julian and Gregorian calendars. It is the first of seven months to have a length of 31 days. The first day of the month is known as New Year's Day. That was yesterday. It is now behind us. And that was, of course, the day everybody had to bring out their best and put their right foot in front and say, I am going to make it. Did you say that? If you did not, still, you still have time. So never give up. It means that the year 2021 is over and done with, and now we are facing a new year. Today, Sunday, January 2nd, 2022, we have to learn to say that, 2022, is the first Sunday and the second day of the year. 2022 is going to be another ordinary year, meaning that there will be, uh, there will be just the usual 30, 365 days or 366 days, forgive me, for the year. It's not a leap year. The leap year has one extra day and we get to 366. But this time around, we're still at 366 days. That means that we have 363 days left in 2022. And today, first Sunday of 2022, is the 13th day of winter, meaning I usually challenge Ambassador Lisa to that, meaning that we have 77 days until spring. Yes, everybody looks forward for spring, but we have to wait 77 days. January 2nd is the ninth of the 12 days of, Christ, uh, of Christmas season. So they usually talk of 12 days of Christmas. So we're on day nine and hoping to get to the end as soon as we can. Nobody's rushing that anyway. As that season, that is the season of fall, or rather the season of winter gets hold of us and causes havoc here and there, we are confident that things will be better before they get worse or they will be worse, but they will get better because we always look for the better. As that season makes way for another one, as the year grows older, we are sick, uh, sure and scared, but not intimidated. Yes, we are scared, but not intimidated. We are worried, but will never give up. We will continue to raise an hallelujah because we will continue to raise that hallelujah as we are told in Isaiah 43, 19, that we should not cling to the things of the past because he who makes us will never abandon us. We will remain steadfast in our conviction that fear is a liar and that by his stripes, we will remain shielded from pandemics and other diseases of the body. We will remain faithful to his word and serve him in and out of season because his word in Jeremiah 29, 11 assures us that, plan, that he plans to prosper us and not to harm us. He plans to give us hope and a future. Lessons learned from 2021 may not have been the best, but in times like these, on the dawn of a new year, as we now know, we must find hope in meditation and reflection, not indifference. In times like these, we must turn to the pages of that guidebook that never wears out, that never expires, that book that brings inspiration and strength, that book that gives strength to trudge on, to walk on, to move on, that book that reminds us and remains so and gives us such confidence, uh, such confidence rather, as to hold our heads up high and remain faithful to the task of pursuing happiness as he watches and guides our every step. 
The awareness that our tomorrow will be better than our yesterday invites us to take stock of the year that just ended and to commit in a resolution or two to make 2022 better, the odds notwithstanding. Given that we are still just at the very start of 2022, it will not be a bad idea to look backwards and peer forwards. So how did 2021 fare for you? There is no doubt that COVID-19 and its variants and the humbug that this is causing remained the major talk of that year 2021. But as the creator's handbook we were scared, uh, tells us again, we were scared, but we did not lose faith. We felt bullied, but we were not daunted. We lost loved ones, but we did not give up our trust in him. We went jobless, but we did not sleep hungry. So let us face the future with confidence, convinced as we read from, the li from that line in Jeremiah that he has plans to prosper us he has plans to give us hope. He has plans to make us better than we were yesterday. After all, did someone not once invite us to keep hope alive? And what is hope but the ability to trust and to obey? With that said, we will go over to Houston, Texas, where the chair of Africa Online Media Corporation, Reverend Pam, is on standby to welcome all of us to wish us well and to open the door for the discussion. Reverend Pam. Wow, I think I should, I'll start calling you Reverend Barnabas. I, you, you are truly a son of encouragement. I actually Thank thought I was, I, I was in service, you know, and just for the record, before I welcome our viewers, I want you to know Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 is my favorite scripture. As a matter of oh. fact, that was my first memory scriptures as I gave my life to Christ. You know, That's a coincidence I, for me. <laughs> yes, it ties in with this today's topic. We're talking about yeah. lessons learned from 2021, but verse 18 says, remember you not the former things or things of old. Then verse 19 says, I will do a new thing. Shall you not know it? I'll even make rivers to flow in the desert. That's and right. telling us that what is the Bible is referring to is don't remember the bad things of the past. So it's okay for us to remember the good things, but we are talking about lessons learned. So some of those lessons will be, will be not so good but there are lessons because, you know, uh, it would help us to prevent repeating our errors. So thank you so much. You even talked about uh, uh, by stripes your heel and whatever. I think that's uh, Isaiah 53 verse 5. So I, I, I think, you know, that we, everybody knows your near stuff. So I don't want to go to Reverend Barnabas. I don't want to confuse our viewers. <laughs> but I uh, thank you so much. It's okay. Again. I think thank you. These are all last minute things you jot down for the editorials. You are so gifted, you are so anointed, you know, and on behalf of Africa Online Media Corporation, I wanna appreciate you again. Uh, we don't appreciate you enough. You are awesome, you rock. I love you, I appreciate you, you are amazing. You are such Thank a- you so much. Thank you so much, thank you. Show. Thank you, you are so amazing, you are so very faithful. Thanks. You know, and it's it's a privilege for me to work with you. I want you to know that, you know, and on behalf of Africa Online Media Corporation, I want to wish our viewers, our partners, all our people, both in the diaspora and the continent, uh, 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 not just a happy 2022, but a year filled with divine health, with divine favor, divine prosperity, and divine protection. I want to just bless every one of you with the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and does not add sorrow to it. That's Proverbs 10, 22. I'm not trying to preach, but uh, as a Christian and a child of God and a servant of God, what I say, what I do is informed by my faith and I'm not gonna apologize for it, okay? And uh, Brother Ronald, you are so welcome. Happy New Year. Uh, mm -hmm. Our, our co-host and global ambassador is on travels, doing her ambassadorial duties and helping other people. She'll be back next Sunday. She's, um, I mean, seriously missed. And yeah, so I can't do what she does. That's why she was not here. I didn't introduce you. I, we had to just go with the flow. And I like the fact that this show is unscripted. So we are talking about lessons learned from 2021 and New Year's resolution. We'll combine those two because they are interconnected. But I would like to uh, hand the mic over to Brother Ronald to, to tell us about some of the lessons he's learned. I learned quite a bit. I'll be sharing mine later. But I want to give the mic over to Brother Ronald. Over to you, Brother Ronald. 
Thank you, thank you. I'm glad that Nia's song started out with the scripture from the book of Jeremiah, because I have learned last year since I'm studying the Bible with a group of people to put God first. Before I was out in the world, doing it, going every which way, not even know how to put my first foot in front of my second foot to lead me on a good path. But since I've been following the Bible and joining a group of religious students, I have learned to put God first. Also, I am going to school and majoring in business administration with a concentration in finance. So I got to buckle down and study more so that I can earn my degree. I got two more years to go. So that's another lesson that I learned is to study more to pace myself and to concentrate on my studies and to put God first. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you and welcome again to the program. And uh, what made you decide to put that right foot in front all the time rather than turning around and running back? Well, it's, it's my faith in God because I believe that God is the only certainty. Most people are uncertain about their future, about what tomorrow will bring. But when you have faith in God, you can concentrate on him because he's the creator of all things. And he will guide your footsteps. So I have faith in him. And I believe everyone who is a Christian has faith in him also. Even people out in the secular world um, put their faith in God, even though they don't really know him as we as Christians do. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell that brother or sister you meet on the street, who when you mention God, they turn their face and say, uh-uh, leave me alone. What would you tell that person? Well, what I would first do is try to begin at being of the minds, put myself in their place and try to understand them from their perspective. And then I will ask them a question. Did you know that Jesus Christ died for the sins of mankind and that he was resurrected for our salvation? And that by doing so, if we would repent and turn away from our bad ways, we are given the gift of the grace of God to have eternal life. I will then break it down and say that everything that you had done in the past by you believing in Christ, dying for your sins, you can just put those away and put on a new man and walk forward in a new life, knowing that you have Jesus Christ as your mediator to God and he has also put his life a ransom so that we may live eternally. And as long as we repent, we have that gift of eternal life. Thank you so much. We'll be back with you, Reverend Pam. I believe you either have uh, those uh, hills you climbed or valleys you went through or rivers you crossed uh, during 2021. Are you ready to share some with us? I will, you know, it's uh, <laughs> oh, it's amazing how when you look at all these things, even uh, uh, like I've said on the show before, I like to speak off the cuff, so I don't do any research, but and when I open my mind, I'm not really sure what's going to come out, but I'm sure it blesses people because a lot of people want to hear what I'm saying. You know, when you look at 2021 and you think about the fact that 2022 seemed nightmarish and we we're not sure if we we're going to survive 2021 and this pandemic has been going on for two years you have no choice it doesn't matter how stubborn you are or if you consider yourself an atheist you have no choice but to admit and confess that god remains omnipotent and omniscient because Without him, none of us would be here. Who decides who leaves the hospital and who doesn't? Same treatment. 
they give those patients same, let's say yeah, two patients coming with COVID, same race, same ethnic background, same gender, same uh, uh, age group. They get the same therapy, one leaves and one survives. When I say leaves, I mean L-E-A-V-E-S, not L-I-V-E-S. Yes. Who decides? It's not the doctors, it's not the medication. It's God Almighty. So if you haven't learned that lesson by now, I hope you have learned that lesson. That's a big lesson. Even me as a child of God and a servant of God, I still learn that he remains omnipotent. Only he, when he says yes, no man can say no. But another lesson I learned is to depend on my faith in him. Sola fide. That's it. That's what has kept me and that's what is, continue, is going to continue to keep me. You know, my faith in him. Nobody else, not in myself, not in another human being, not in a career, not in a degree, not in a bank account, not in my business, on him and him alone. You know, I'm not trying to preach, but Hebrews 12 to say, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. The thing is, you, you can try to depend on human beings, 100% they will disappoint you, guaranteed. Not intentionally, some of them may be intentionally, but the one person that will never disappoint you is God Almighty. I tell people, I don't care if you're an addict to social media, he has the largest following, more than 7 billion people follow him on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. He's the, 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 the greatest celebrity ever. So why not follow him? There's a reason why people follow him. His line is never busy. He will never stab you in the back. He will never lie to you. So the biggest lesson I've learned is it starts with him as the, 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 the alpha and it ends with him as the omega. Another lesson is that family is life. My family is so precious to me. We are really large, but we are very close. And it doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you, family. Uh, don't get me wrong. There are some family members that with family members like that, you don't need enemies. That's not what I'm talking about. For the most part, family is very important. Your family should be like a hospital, a sanctuary where you go for comfort, you know, where you can count on them because a lot of can't see Jesus, a physical, but they should be the manifestation of God's love for us and care for us. So I would say those are the main three lessons. There are other lessons, but Again, and another thing is that there are people who are repeat offenders. You can forgive them. They will still find a way to try to offend you or to hurt you or harm you, but don't quit because you forgive them not for their own good, but for your own good. But one main thing I learned is that when you forgive them, you don't have to sleep with them. You don't have to eat with them. You don't. Jesus forgave the, the Roman soldiers that killed him it's last words where father forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. But I don't recall seeing, and I challenge anybody that you can, you can uh, inbox me, see where he ate with them and slept with them. So you can forgive them, but you don't need to eat from the same plate with them. Yeah, so. Thank you very much. Talking about forgiveness, when you, free, when you forgive, your conscience is clear, you sleep peacefully all, overnight, but that other person whom you forgive and continues to growl over it continues to have it in mind never sleeps well because they are carrying that burden so it is not good to carry any extra luggage anywhere for anything sake because it is absolutely unnecessary let us remain faithful let us keep the faith and let us go forward confident that we will make it whatever the odds because there is a higher power watching over us, guiding us and helping us to do better things. And pandemic, no pandemic. We have had a year, I thought it was going to be a year of transition that will go from pandemic to better things than ever before. And that we're going to move forward as always. But then we never know, he knows and he would, he's in control. And eventually let us see, this year is only two days old what they're talking of Omicron being so devastating, but let's hope that he will continue to guide us, that he will continue to watch over us, that he will heal the world. Yeah, so let, me, let me just, uh, yeah, real okay. quick before I run out. you yeah. know, the sad thing about the forgiveness lessons is 
sometimes the perpetrators don't even know what they have done to you. So you, you who is a victim, you are suffering and the perpetrator is living a good life. So it's not all the time that they know what they have done. And some people, it's just their nature. There are some people on this earth who have decided to be evil. And it's not up to us to transform those people. We pray for them. We need to pray for them because they are not happy. There's no way an evil person can be a happy person. Somebody will speak ill of others. Somebody will backbite. Somebody uh, who is a jealous side, like I call them jealous sides. That's <laughs> jealous people. Yes. They cause jealousitis. You know, a disease called jealousitis. That the only cure for that is deliverance from God. So, and, and there are some people, you know, that know about it, but they don't care. It, you know, again, so you forgive them for your own good, not for their own good. The one thing I always say is that God will never endorse evil. I don't care where it's coming from. He will never. We have seen one of the things, the lessons that we have learned, we don't discuss politics here, and I'm not being political, but this is a fact and it's a truth that one lie can destroy a family, can destroy a nation, can destroy the globe. We know what happened last year. In this country of all countries, we, who could have thought that what happened in January 6th last year could ever happen in this country? But it taught us a lesson, a major lesson, that nobody is untouchable. And, 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 and it also, I just, I just thought about this, the emblem on the American uh, uh, legal tender, money says, in God we trust. Yes. That is powerful. People may not realize it, but the founding fathers were not stupid. God has protected this country and he will continue to protect this country, not because of its citizens, but in case you did not know, 90% of money spent to evangelize or to spread the gospel around the globe comes from this country comes from the United States. So why will God not protect this country? We need to keep that in mind. That was a major lesson learned that nobody, nobody comes close to God. God protected this country and saved this country in January the 6th last year. It was not any human being. It was God. Berarona. Yes, and while we are on the topic of forgiveness, as Reverend Pam, Pam said, a lot of people who do wrong things do not know what they're doing. They just do it out of impulse or as a reaction. But God said that we are supposed to forgive one another because how can he forgive us if we can't forgive our fellow man? Mm -hmm. So forgiveness is, is a great thing to do. And I know some people want to get revenge or counter back or do something bad to that person that did something bad to them. But in the Bible, it says that God says that vengeance is mine. Mm -hmm. And God is the best way to handle situations that may be troublesome to us because of another person or other people. So forgiveness does go a long way. It gives you peace of mind. You don't have to worry about it. You just say, okay, I forgive that person. They didn't know what they were doing. If they knew me, they probably wouldn't have done it. But with forgiveness, it goes a long way. Very important. And the Pope hopped on that during his uh, Christmas message. He told especially married couples to learn to say, I'm sorry, thank you, and move on. So he was also <laughs> touching us through his own window, telling us that forgiveness is capital, forgiveness is crucial, forgiveness is very important. We don't have to bear grudges. We don't have to carry those things that happened yesterday into tomorrow. After all, even the Bible again tells us to never go to bed with anger in your mind. I don't remember what, what verse or chapter that is from, but Reverend Pam will bear me out that the Bible tells us not to carry, not to go to bed with anger in our minds or on I'll our minds. Yes, so that is very important. I, I, I want to share something as I just thought about this. 
you, you know, it, it's a shame because when we had the original lockdown last year, it brought out humanity in people around the world. People were kinder. Everybody was afraid. And of course, everybody turned to God. Everybody. For some reason, in 2021, people forgot about the pain, the anguish, the grief that all the deaths caused and crimes went back up. The other day we got a text from one of our team members was wondering, you know, I mean, he fights crime, so it's good for his business, but he was so discouraged. And what is happening in this country? Why? Are we fighting coronavirus or we are fighting the guns? Or we are fighting, you know, criminals out there? But also another lesson is that no matter how smart we think we are, no matter how mighty we think we are, nobody is as mighty as God Almighty. Because even in 20, now we are 2022, the greatest country in this world still has not solved this coronavirus issue. They have not subdued it. The vaccines came. We can thank the government, we can thank the scientists, but God gave them the brains and the know-how to come up with those vaccines. But it's still not contained. And we all thought, and this is for our brothers and sisters on the continent, the grass is not greener on the other side. Stop risking your life. For the first time, last year, people, people did not even want to come to America. African countries did not want people from the US in their country because of the, the, the pandemic. They saw how people were dying like flies in this country. And we could not manage it, we could not prevent it. So I want to encourage my brothers and sisters. Africa is the promised land. It is the motherland. There's a reason why it's the motherland. So let's try to better life. Some of us want to go home, but we can't because of civil war, because of security issues. Not in all the countries, but we'll try to empower those of you who are still there, courageous to still be there and be privileged to be there. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. So that's another lesson that we have learned. Nobody could have believed that people were gonna die like flies in this country. And when those deaths were happening, nobody could have believed that in 2022, we still will not have this pandemic under control. So we just have to pray and keep praying. Niaso. Thank you very much. And I understand that one of the lessons of 2021 coming from 2020 uh, from 2020 to 2021 was family solidarity people mm -hmm. who had not called one another or visited one another for a long time in spite of the corona well not because of the corona but because of their own uh, attitude to life started mm -hmm. thinking twice and many people picked up the phone to call to check out on their fellow brothers and sisters whom they had neglected for so long. So yeah. one of the lessons was that we increased the use of social media in a positive way to yes. help each other, to help each other stand up, to help each other feel better because they were like neglected. But now that person who had not called for so long called and then made my day, gave me a new reason to hope because I realized that that person was not calling, is now calling. Now we can communicate together. Now we can share together. Now we can move forward together, believing and hoping that tomorrow is always going to be better than today. Brother Rona. Yes, I have a question yes. for you. Forgive me, yes. Brother Rona, because Donna, right, you need to, I know you, you shared some, but not your personal. Can you share lessons learned from 2021, not 2020? Because yes. you were challenged in 2020. Yes. You had a major challenge in 2020. Yes. But let's talk about 2021. What lessons did you learn without going to in too much private stuff, but just as a general, as you as an, an individual, what lessons did you learn from 2021? The greatest lesson I learned was that it was the power of prayer. Because coming from 2020 and 20, living through 2021, mm. prayer continued to be a cornerstone of my family's life. Mm. And 
even those who were not immediate family would call and say, can we pray on the phone? So Absolutely. prayer became a very solid way of consolidating those relationships. It was a big lesson learned in 2021 that prayer is not when you get together in the same room. No, the telephone has come to reduce those distances, to make things easy, to help us to communicate more closely, more upfront with one another. And the other thing is the Zoom calls or the whatever calls uh, you can call and see the other person. Video Telephones in those, yeah, the telephone in those days was you call and talk, that was all. But now you call, you're not only just talking, you're seeing the person. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, actually, we had a family problem. I mean, not a problem, a family get together with a friend in Cameroon. She was mm -hmm. sick uh, uh, last year. And we called her and she picked the phone. She had gone into a situation where she could not talk, but she was not able to talk. And she said, uh, we asked her, what did you eat today? And she was able to tell us what she ate. And we asked her, what are we doing? She said, oh, mama, you are frank puff puff, because my wife was making some puff puffs and showed her the zoomed in on the pot, on the frying pan and so on. And that, that, that greatly uh, made our day because we had feared in 2021 that we were going to lose this person. But wow. God, in his, in his goodness, brought her back, not just bringing her back, but giving her back her speech, power to communicate with one another. So it was a big lesson learned in 2021. But also the family, just the family being together, my family being together. I know we came to this country as the children were growing up. They've grown up and thank God none has strayed. The family is as solid as has been. And 2021 was a year of even more solidarity than ever before. So it's, it was a lesson learned. And also just being able to live in this country, survive the pandemic, and be able to communicate with those back in Africa once in a while to let them know that things are better today than they were yesterday. And hopefully God will guide us to have a better tomorrow. Makes us feel that, yes, family, friends, relatives, people out there who you may not have met for the past 20 years can call you, talk with you, and you share something in common. You tell them your story, they tell you their story. It makes that solidarity even more solid, if I can put it that way. So yeah. it, has been a, it has been a very, very useful year. The lessons have been many. I cannot name them one by one, but mm -hmm. they are in my heart and I keep them there. And I trust that the great, person up there watching will con continue to bless us, will continue to help us to move forward in the same spirit, if not a better spirit, if not a greater spirit, that will continue to sow those seeds of love and be able to stand by each other, stand with each other, help each other, uh, raise the spirits of each other. And of course, this program says raising awareness. Yes, we raise awareness. We encourage people to give up the bad things they might have been doing unknowingly and move forward with the good things that make the, the, the tomorrow better than yesterday. Reverend Pam. Yeah, Nia Song, thank you so much um, for that candid lesson. I, it's amazing. I just, I just thought about something that happened last year. I, I'm not gonna mention any names because I need to protect the people. But one of the lessons that I learned was that life is not guaranteed. No. And sometimes it may seem contradictory when Psalms 91 verse 16 definitely says, with long life would I satisfy you and show you my salvation. But nobody, nobody knows the mind of God. Isaiah 55 verse, uh, uh, um, uh, from verse eight down to 12, if you are nine and 10, it says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. But Something happened that I, I actually was affected too. And it was sad because people were expecting me to have answers as a servant of God and I did not have the answers. All I could say was that God is God. If we all knew how he operates, then we will be God. But uh, this is, uh, 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 I went to visit somebody and I took some food there. The person that collected the food from me looked fine, nothing was wrong with this person. That person went to bed that night and did not wake up. Oh no. A young person. Yes. 
nobody could understand. If anybody told any of us in that house that night that this person will not wake up in the morning, we would have just laughed. If anybody had told this person that they will not wake up in the morning, they would have just laughed. Again, I'm not gonna reveal the gender or give any specifics because I have to protect these people. But that was a lesson, not just to me, but to all there that it's not about your title. It's not about how much money you have in your bank account. It's not about what family you come from. It's not about your economic status or political status or academic status. When it's your turn, it's your turn. When is your turn? This person was not sick. So it, 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 it shook a lot of people, brought a lot of fear, but then it turned a lot of people to God, to prayers. Because again, it's like somebody who is healthy, has a lot going for them, goes to bed. There were a lot of people in that house and you don't wake up in the morning. It, it, it is a shame. That lesson is that we should try our best to be in right standing with God. That's righteousness. We are all sinners and we sin every day. But the thing is not to be a habitual sinner and to quickly repent because you never know. There is, there's a place where people go after death. Whether you believe there's heaven or, uh, or hell or not doesn't matter. Your, your lack of belief does not change the facts or the truth that there's a heaven or there's a, there's a hell. You don't want to find out when you get to the wrong place. It's just be better to just be in right standing. So you know you are, if you pass away and there's no heaven, you have nothing to lose. But if you pass away and there's, you end up in hell, there's no second chance. You know, so life is so fragile. Life is really fra fragile. And, and, and we don't own our lives. We don't own our breath. We don't. There is somebody who make sure we, we breathe every day. That makes sure we breathe in oxygen and not nitrogen. There's more nitrogen in the, in the atmosphere, more than 70% than oxygen. That there is somebody, you may call them God, you may call them some force, whatever it is, whatever name you call them, just know there is somebody who decides. That person to me is God. So that's that lesson that life is not guaranteed to nobody. It's not. But I run out. Yes, it's kind of hard to follow up on that. But <laughs> I do, I have a brother-in-law whose brother passed away. Anyway, not to get too personal. Um, he lived the hard life. And he was involved in a lot of the wrong things. But then what happened was he got an aneurysm and he, had, he got brain cancer and it was, it had spread. But what he did before he died, he died after a week, but before he died, he gave his life to Christ. Awesome. And at the, at the funeral, there was a dancing, a dancer coming down the aisle with a crown in his hand. And as he danced, he went up to the coffin and placed the crown within the coffin with the young man. So people didn't understand what that symbolized, but my sister was able to say, because she's a child of God, that he received his crown, and that's in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. But as far as what Mia Song was saying, how this pandemic, even though it's bad, brought families together. It brought my family together. We text each other each morning. We visit each other. We help each other out. There's only four of us, plus my niece and nephew and their children. But we have gotten closer. Mm -hmm. And we help each other. So that's what we're doing right now. Awesome. It's great. Okay, yes. so me ask some. I have a yes. question for you. Sure. The topic is lessons learned and New Learn. Year's resolution. Yes. So what is your New Year's resolution for 2022? Uh, I'm not giving much to resolutions, but I always believe 
that mm. I will do better the next time around. Mm -hmm. I always believe that the glass is half empty, requiring me to fill it up, not to empty it completely. Mm -hmm. So I don't really do resolutions, but I say, okay, I will do better tomorrow than I did yesterday. That summarizes my concept of resolutions is making up your mind to be ready to be better tomorrow than yesterday. That's a resolution because you, you resolve to do that. <laughs> so you're not, you're not gonna shy or play with words. That is a resolution. But, okay. but wanna, well, let's hear yours. My resolution is to be appointed as a commissioner, one of the commissioners, because they need 25 of them, to work with the immigrant community, the immigrants from Africa and the Caribbean, and their fears and how they get along with the people and have an open forum with the people of Philadelphia to help them with issues. Because I'm in the city of Philadelphia, United States. Okay. And also to work harder with my studies so that I can earn my degree. And finally, I would like to be able to, which I'm looking at my budget now, to give for the you call them border holes and Africa continent? Oh, border border holes. Holes. Yes. Border holes. <laughs> border holes. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. I want to give to his dad and make a donation in April. Awesome. Those are my, those are my uh, resolutions. Okay, that's awesome. great. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. for me, today is the second. I had not taken a resolution, but at the midnight, we had a service Friday night crossing over. And the message was solar fee day, faith only for 2022. We had a service on New Year's Day, Saturday morning, and we had service this morning. Usually uh, I, I come on this show just a, a couple of hours after service. And so that solar fee day became my resolution. I'm not, I'm not the author of it. It was, a, it was a, a message that my pastor shared on New Year's and because one of my nicknames, my covenant names is Fifi or Faithful. That was given to me by my pastor. And at that, that solar fide just solidified it that I have to stay faithful to the Lord, no matter what. You know, I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not moved by anything that I see. You know, and so that, that became my resolution to keep my faith, grow my faith, and stay on faith only, you know, because faith will move mountains. My faith is not something that I am believing for, it's something that exists, you know? Having faith that I'm blessed, I am not hoping, I know I am blessed. Having faith in God that he'll take care of me because I'm his baby, he's already taking care of me. It's not something that I have to pray for, it's something that exists. Faith is evidence that exists. It's not something that I'm hoping will happen. No, it's faith, having faith in him that I will stay in divine health. I am in divine health. He's kept me in divine health. So, I mean, I, I, I've attended events. I go out, even though I use hand sanitizers or whatever, but there are people that do the same thing and they still get sick. So I, that, that, I saw that today is my New Year's resolution. Yeah, so. Thank you very much for that and for sharing. And uh, Brother Donald, I know you've made a lot of resolutions there, especially the one committed to improving yourself by improving, by improving your academic performances and doing, uh, completing your studies. And uh, that promise of, or that resolution to donate for the boreholes in Africa, that is a big one as far as I see you sitting right there, participating in this program and please, please touch a life, make a difference. That is the way to go. As uh, Reverend Pam once told me, sow a seed. Yes. And uh, since then, sowing seeds has become part of my life. It's not a resolution. It's just the way the world should be. We should learn to sow seeds because when we sow, we will have harvest in abundance. Reverend Pam. Yes, yes I'm sorry. I was checking yes, out sir. Facebook. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, and um, you know, uh, at the top of the hour, you know, I know last week we had shared the videos of the borehole. Uh, our accountant zoomed in. I don't know if she lost connection. I was hoping she would be on here today. But um, 
and our, our, our administrator is not able to zoom in again, but this, this um, I, I, I want to thank Brother Ronald on behalf of African Online Media Corporation for including our project, Operation Boho 55, as part of his resolution. Last Sunday was the first time on this show that all participants made a commitment to donate to Operation Boho 55. For those who are listening, it was last year, in June of last year, that we found out from our administrator that there were healthcare facilities on the continent that do not have water. We're not talking about clean running water, we're talking about water period. And we decided right there on the, on the air, you can go watch that show from June last year, that we were gonna do something about it. It took three months, July, August, uh, June, July, August, and on September the 6th of last year, we had a, a virtual fundraiser for Operation Borho 55. And we raised about 11,700, I believe. The accountant again, hopefully she can zoom in during that show. But I, I say this to say, we're not wasting our time here. Our motto is raising awareness about issues that affect Africa and Africans, seeking solutions to those issues and making progress. That issue of the water was raised. We sought the solution and we're not doing manual boreholes, we're doing solar panels so that even an elderly person can turn on the tap. They don't have to wait for a young person to press the pump or to push the, the, the lever up and down for them to get water. I am saying this because we have a long way to go. Every penny that is being donated, and here, so you will speak, you will translate this into our French audience. 100% of it is going to the borehole. There is a separate bank account for the borehole with actually a different bank. And our accountant is the one managing that funds. So 100% of it is going to the borehole. None of it is going for administrative fee. Our sister organization, Africa's Brain Bank, has boots on the ground in four of the five regions of the continent. They are implementing this project for Africa online for free. So this is something that is going to transform lives for generations to come. That first borehole in Kaba Ferry uh, community in Karine District, Sierra Leone, I'm not from Sierra Leone, I've never been there but by God's grace, I will make it there for the ribbon cutting. I'm saying by God's grace, because I don't know about travel conditions, but our, our team, we have uh, 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 at least uh, five or six team members in that country, in Freetown. So they will be there, and I'm sure our administrator will be there. But that particular borehole is going to take care of that maternity, and it's gonna take care of 6,000 households. 6,000, not 6,000 people, households. And you know the households in Africa are not small. So I say this to say, we are making a difference. And we are grateful to God that we can do this. Last week I was urging other organizations to do something because Africa Online alone cannot do it. We have to do something. We are going to build this borehole as since we took a step of faith, a borehole that should have cost us 20,000, 28,000, or 30,000 with the solar panel is costing us 11,700 because the engineer decided to donate his time and his company to do this for free. And we are only, he's only charging us for the cost of doing the borehole. The next borehole is going to be in Kenya and we're going to be raising funds for that. Again, uh, uh, at this time, I want to thank Sister Ob Ob Obioma. She came on this show and as a guest. And she made a commitment and she's kept that commitment every month. I think she gives a hundred dollars, a hundred or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure I have to, to check with the accountant, but she has not missed one month. And because of her donation, the amount of money for the borehole has gone up to 12,000 something because of her monthly donation. Again, um, the, this, this borehole has been dug. 
uh, last week we showed the, the tower being built that's gonna hold the tank and the solar panels. The tap is already uh, been installed and uh, the top donor's name will be on that uh, 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 pump. So if you are a top donor, your name will be inscribed on the pump. The, uh, uh, the other donors will be listed on a plaque that will go there in the, so that people can know who donated to that, um, to that borehole. You know, $1,000 and above, they'll be listed. We cannot list everybody. We appreciate every money, $50 or whatever, but if we have to list every donation, $10, 25, it'll be, the list will be too long for the plaque. But the plaque will carry the top donors and those who give more than a thousand dollars. However, the borehole will have the name of the top the top donor uh, who gave uh, five thousand dollars in this case. Again, five thousand dollars can dig a borehole somewhere, but it cannot dig a, 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 a solar panel uh, powered borehole. I would like to encourage everybody to go to our website www.africaonlinetv.org and make a tax-free donation. If you need a tax receipt, inbox us, our accountant will prepare that for you. She's a tax accountant, licensed both in the US and the UK. So she will send you the tax write-off. Again, make a difference, do something. Do, water is life, that's our thing. Water is not a privilege, it's a necessity. You know, it's an entitlement to have water. I am so grateful to God that we're able to sink this borehole in December. We're just waiting for the solar, uh, 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 for the tower to be ready and they will install the solar pa uh, uh, panels. Again, I am so grateful to God to be part of this. I got that vision having lunch with my, my employees a few years ago and I discussed that on the show before. And I am personally grateful that it's come to pass. But it's, it wasn't just me, it's you, everybody that gave. Is Niasson who bought the vision? Is Brother Ronald who is committed? Is Dr. Vivian Kumba that is committed? Is Ambassador Lisa? Is all the team members? Is Reverend Solange? All of them that are committed. Is Brother Agrippa that gave a donation? Is Dr. Ogoji that gave a donation? Is Dr. Tazo? All of them. Everyone. I cannot name everybody who gave a donation, but it's every single one of you and those who are yet to give a donation. And I want to encourage those on the continent: you should give to. Don't always be on the receiving end. You should give. And the people in that community, they will give of their time. And that's because they, they will manage that borehole. They will keep it clean. They'll keep the solar panel clean. They will make sure that the water is not wasted. That's very, very important. Nia, so. Thank you very much. Uh, nous parlons là de, de, de notre opération Borehole 55 pour uh, donner de l'eau portable dans les communautés, dans les diverses communautés en Afrique, surtout, surtout là où il y a le centre de santé, parce que bon, l'État construit des de, de centres de santé sans euh, l'eau portable, mais Africa Online Media Corporation a décidé l'année dernière de faire, de, de demander, de venir auprès de vous demander que vous donniez des de, de donations pour qu'on puisse euh, collecter des sous pour construire des points d'eau portables dans les centres de santé développés dans les 55 pays d'Afrique. Et nous espérons que ça va continuer. Le premier a été lancé la semaine dernière au Sierra Leone, l'eau cool. Le centre de santé développé est maintenant euh, en, en position d'avoir de l'eau portable. Les enfants et les femmes ne vont plus chercher de l'eau dans le puits, euh, dans, la, dans la forêt, de, de l'eau qui était très, très sale. Le, de l'eau que nous provisons maintenant est euh, vraiment portable. C'est clair, c'est bon à consommer. Ça ne donne pas les maladies. Et nous vous prions de se joindre à nous pour donner les, de votre petit sou, pour votre petit quelque chose pour qu'on puisse avoir des de, 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 de sous pour continuer ce projet. Le prochain euh, point d'eau sera euh, au Kenya et ça va bientôt commencer. Dès qu'il y a un peu de sous, on va lancer l'opération et nous vous prions de venir auprès de Africa Online Media Corporation et faire votre contribution. C'est www.africaonlinetv.org. Donc, nous vous remercions et nous vous prions qu'au début de cette année 2029, vous puissiez quand même 
laisser quelque chose de côté pour donner, pour soutenir des adoptions d'eau dans les pays africains. Merci. And uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much. It's been a great uh, thing to bring this up even before the anthem as we usually do. So Brother Donald, we, 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 we took it because you said it, because you are committed okay. to it. That is a great, 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 again, as I can say, invest, investment you are making. And we look forward to giving Africa that thing that they need most, water. The continent is full of water, but there is no drinkable water available, especially in health centers around the continent. But we, Africa Online Media Corporation, who are joining our voices to others, begging others, praying others, inviting others to do something for Africa so that the continent can emerge, especially because water is life. We give water where water is most needed. Reverend Pound. Thank you so much. Yes, we went into that because Brother Ronald uh, made that as his resolution. So I would like to urge Africans and all people of African descent to add to their resolutions, to resolve, to contribute toward this borehole or dig a borehole. Whatever you do, either you do it through Africa Online or do it yourself, but do it. Let's start with the rural centers, healthcare facilities. Again, I just don't even want to, I can't even phantom what it's like to give birth or to have a maternity or even run a healthcare clinic without water. They just the idea makes me sick. So we're gonna focus on you know, the solutions because we know the problems are there. And I want at this point, before we, we I share uh, the anthem and talk about next week's topic, we're gonna come back to this. Well, we're asking people to add this to their resolution. Anyway, you know, we had asked for videos Last year, we got a few videos. If you did not send us a video, don't expect to get a borehole. And not everybody who sends a video will get a borehole because it's not possible. However, we are still accepting videos. We want to encourage the other countries to send their videos to info at africaonlinetv.org. Email us a video of a clinic in a rural facility that doesn't have water. The, as you can see from this other one, the water will not just be available to the clinic, it will be available to the local community as well. So send us a video and, and specify that you are doing that video for Africa's Online Media Corporation's Operation Borehole 55. All the videos that were sent to us, we made sure they mentioned that there because we don't want stock videos send us a video for this purpose specifically. We are not gonna accept a stock video. We know we are very transparent. We wanna make sure what we are, we are sharing on this air is real and is the truth. So your video must say it's being made for Africa Online and it's, our organization's name is Africa Online Media Corporation. It's not Africa Online. There are too many Africa Online on, 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 on the internet. Africa Online Media Corporation, that's our name. And the project is Operation Borehole 55. That's the name of the project. The theme is Water is Life. So send that video and we'll put it in queue. Right now, we are going to Kenya after Sierra Leone. There's another facility in Sierra Leone that needs water, but we are not going to go back to Sierra Leone until we are done with the other nations. We are starting with one borehole per country. That's why it says Operation Borehole 55. The vision came as Operation Borehole 54. Because at that time, uh, that was 2016, there, there was no, there were only 54 nations. Morocco had not rejoined. So after Morocco rejoined, we changed the name to 55. Again, uh, I will see if I can share, before the anthem, I will see if I can share, um, I can share that video. I know I did it last, last week, but you guys give yeah. me a Yeah, let me if see. I will see yeah. if not. I'm, I'm not gonna bother, but let me see. All right. uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, let me let me try something here. I, I'll I'll try to play it again before we do the anthem. You guys, give me a minute here. Brother Donald, just bear with us and let us share this. It is very important. Oh. Yes. Uh, okay. What what do you see? Uh, the listing of what the videos, different videos. I don't know which one is the right one. Do you see an oh. image? Do you see an image? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, that's the borehole. Oh, okay. You see an image with like a red with a lock and a red. Yeah, with yeah, with the, yes. yeah, with the red top. Yes. That is the borehole. It's already been dug and it's been locked. Yes. That's the borehole. It's already been sunk. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do you see a tap? That's right. Yeah. Yes. This is the external tap. Okay. Okay. Yes. That has been dug. That's where the water is going to be coming from. All right. Yes. Okay. And let me see. Um, the next I'm going one. To say, yeah, this is important because we want people to add this, their the, the participation in this borehole as part of their, their resolution. Okay. Yes. Is it our, I'm going to share this video is not very, this one, you know what? Let me just play this. Let me play. Um, I'll play all these videos. Okay. All right. It's a good way to start the new year. That's right. right. Yeah. It's a good way. Let's see um, if this is. Okay. Do you see the videos? Yeah, yeah they are listed there. Yes. Okay. I I, I am going to play. Uh, the good thing is that the anthem is on here. So, but if it's okay, I'll play all these videos in the order that they are they they appear. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, we're already at the top of the hour anyway, so you can yeah. share. I know I'm going to share all of it and the anthem will okay. be uh, at the end, okay? The last. Okay, all right, go ahead. Okay, let me know. I am Mohamed Juri uh, Jalo. Yeah, that's right. Is it playing? Yeah, it's playing. Yeah. Okay. This is Sierra Leone and uh, North, Northwest region, and uh, this is Karine District, Sela Liba Kingdom. And the community of which I am present here talking, this community is Kadaferi community, and uh, we have here yeah, the community head coach of which is situated at Kadaferi. With me, I have the nurse. I'm here today to assess how 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 actually they they, they manage to, to 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 do their day to day activities without water and the difficulties and how they. They get their water. With me here, I have the charge who is a, 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 a nurse, an SCH nurse. Good, good, good afternoon, ma. What's your name? My name is Agnes Kano. Agnes Kano. Yes. In a inside SCH. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, those, those partners, how, how actually do they manage for, for work now without work? How do you think of work now? The same as we want to have to go outside. We want to close up to the end of our staff. We keep the end of the day to the stream. So the stream for Kautan at the hospital. Yes. So this hospital will not get water facility at all. At all. So how how actually you manage? How you manage where water no they are? And how how the water system they, they disturb you work at the center, at the hospital yeah. Especially when you want to do delivery. Well, because look, the deliveries, most of the delivery standards. So if they are out patients pass the relatives thing, can go now the stream, go fetch water. Okay. Then our water side they go. It, the sound of get the water, the water not no clean, no, no, no. and the brook day, okay. uh, and it's not good for human consumption. Okay. That leads to the area. Okay. So with the big, let them go help you. You can see, we are shooting this video for Africa Online Media Corporation, and of course, uh, and uh, this, 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 this particular video that we are shooting here today is for Africa Online Media Corporation, Borehole 55. So as 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 the know that we just spoken, we are going to the stream now to see, to get a pictorial evidence of the water which they they, 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 they bring to the hospital for domestic purposes. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this is the water which uh, this is a stream and uh, which uh, the women normally get their water for their domestic uh, purposes and uh, with me here in the north he has already shown me the water which this water is not conducive and this water is not good it it, it leads to water
on diseases and of course as you can see the women are, are bringing the water they are taking it to the hospital for for delivery purposes Room where they are now uh, putting the water in and uh, coming for the deliveries. Okay. So that you are telling this, that you are telling this where the people now they put the water. Una take ya. Put the water. Una take ya. Una mm. take, take it, take it. So how how the constraint of the water business for Nigeria? You know, it's for we right now because the strain okay. is so far. Okay. Let's see. This 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 how far una people get the water? Kilometer. A kilometer. Yes, sir. So meaning the place is far small. small. The, so the water pure? Not pure. They're not pure. Mm -hmm. So now the water they take out and then the labor room. Yes, yes. When I can't put them for many nurse where they don't do in delivery, for many able to use the, 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 the water. Eh? Yes, sir. So now the labor room this. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, this is the labor room as you can see. And uh, we also have the, 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 the couch here delivery. where they normally do their deliveries and all other stuff. It is it is not really easy. So that is why we are shooting this video for Africa Online uh, Media Corporation, Borough 55, for them to see and see what they can do. You see, it is not. I name Palman Bokai. No, it's a taxi. So that you want to go on our side. I didn't want to go get my time. 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 I didn't want to how how do they manage water business now? They construct for water, pass go down on the stream mm -hmm. for the water for all the human and cook mm -hmm. and go down on the stream for the children, the not the stream okay. for water. Okay. They come for can deliver and pass the human and cow with the cow the yellow man and go take the water down on the stream. Okay. So is it, that stream there but any human and the town is for cook. Okay. As as I likely said earlier on, this uh, video is being made. Africa Online Media Corporation, Boho 55, and uh, we just want them to see the constraints, how actually people in this part of the country, Kaba Ferry community, and at the, at the uh, health center, how they manage to, to how they manage of, 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 of. I'm one a public superintendent. Uh, who also doubles as the district water and sanitation and hygiene ward, a coordinator for carrying a DHMT, uh, northwest of Sierra Leone. Uh, I am uh, part of uh, Africa Brain Bank team in Sierra Leone. Uh, today we are doing this video at the Skaba Ferry Community Head Post. Uh, the first site of operation, Borehole 65 uh, project implementation. Um, hello. Uh, what is your name? Yeah. Okay, uh, previously we did a video here of which we sent to Africa above 55 uh, the, the last time. Uh, are you there inside? No. Okay. President said that the church is not around. Okay. Due to the residents of our So, we need to rest in perfect peace. So, um, 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 um. So we 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 the Afri um, North Africa Brain Bank uh, uh, Borehole 65 have approved uh, the implementation of the borehole at Kabaferi at THP. So what is your take on that? I want to thank the Africa Media Online Corporation for the borehole 65 at Kabaferi THP. And also I want to thank the African Brain Bank for implementing this project in our facilities. So um, uh, what's important with this uh, Africa Borehole 65 implementation we do to this facility and also the community? 
I'm so excited to meet you on this side of Ruvia to my PhD because we are having lots of constraints. By now, the implementation is so good because our community will not struggle to go give my son as to run fresh water. They will use the water for drinking, for water safety, even the delivery. We will do good deliveries, at least I think she will take over very much. I'm so excited for this project in my facility. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you. Welcome to mm -hmm. um, Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, Africa Borough 55 and Africa Green Bank for this uh, such uh, uh, project for, for it to be implemented at the uh, Taba Ferry CHP, of which they have been constraining for water to do their day to day activities, especially the delivery. And we all know uh, during the rain season, they, 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 they do go to the swamp, the river, to fetch water. And that 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 all we, we, we create, you know, the, the causes of out and what about disease and outbreak. Thank you. Let the concrete get water, leg get water, leg get water. Concrete go up, leg get water, leg get water. Take some more it, Palen or Ibapa, you come here big. Okay, okay, sir. That's the money. Add water, leg get water, leg get water. Concrete for get water. Take time, more, take time. There. Bente. Mualem, you okay? You okay? I'm not okay. Back, back. You're not okay. 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 Okay, it's important for us to share. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Actually, this video, I, I need to move it up a little bit. It's supposed to come uh, uh, before the, the, pa the panel, but that's fine. This is the video when, when there's the thread digging. You can see the water is muddy until they reach the, the clear water. It's getting clearer as we go along. Yes. And another thing to see is that these are Africans, so we, we did not go and bring yellow people or black people to come and do this. These are being done by our own brothers on the continent. Yes. I'm Very so proud important. of that. Yes. It's even the, the guy who is operating the machine is a, is a black, is an African too. But around they are speaking Creole. That's the language they are speaking. Okay. See how clean the water is now? Yeah. Okay. So your new your, your new year's resolution was a good resolution. Hopefully and and, and but around you know, you can send this information to other people, you know, it, it, we, we welcome donations from everybody and, and the company. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm.
Africans, Africans for Africa. 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 Africans have many bright ideas. If only you let us share. If you really want to know my history, please come sit down, listen to my story. God gave us a wisdom. He guides our footsteps, makes us shine and transform. Hey, as one people, we got so many cultures, yet indeed we are one. Stand up, Africans, let's save Africa. Let us all unite behind Africa Online Media Corporation. Stand up, Africans, let's save Africa. It's time to come together, promote awareness, progress, and solution. Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. All Africans can rally for a common cause to believe without judgment in what our brother does. To identify and resolve our challenges. To allow each other's ideas without regard to standard as one people with so many cultures yes it did we are one stand up africans for africa let us solve all the problems plaguing our continent stand Africa. Let us empower Africans in and out of Africa. Stand up, Africans, for Africa. Africa Online Media Corporation, that's a good way to start. Stand up, Africans, let's save Africa. They have all the resources we need to benefit our society For everyone, if we believe prosperity for Africans, if we believe medical facilitation for Africans, if we believe stand up, stand up, Africa is for Africa, Africa Online Media Corporation. That's a good way to start. Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa. Africa is a cradle of civilization. The motherland. Stand up, Africans. For Africa. We were enslaved not because we were weak, but because of our hospitality. Stand up, Africans. Let's see Africa Jump on the Africa Online Miracle Jet Don't be let me Stand up Africans For Africa Together we shall succeed Together we will win Stand up Africans Let's see Africa We are writing our own story The truth and we shall tell it to the world Stand up, Africans, for Africa. No more lies. Africa.
Africans on Africa. No more lies. No lies. Africans on Africa. Yes. No more lies. You know, uh, 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 Brother Ron, I, I don't know if you noticed on that ly lyrics. By the way, I'm humble to say the Lord gave me those ly lyrics. I wrote them under the anointing, like I usually write. And uh, one of our sons, DJ Skipper, composed them. And um, I, I know Ambassador Lisa, you know, that's her favorite uh, anthem, her favorite song. But it says, part of the lyrics says, turn up Africans for Africa. Let us solve all our problems. And when we talk about Africa, we're talking about all people of African descent. Water, as far as I'm concerned, the lack of water is the biggest uh, a problem that we have in Africa. We solve the water problem, 50% of our problems will be solved because the other problems are all related to the water. Without water, you don't have health. So um, uh, Nia Song, uh, oh, real quick, next uh, week we'll be talking about punctuality. Uh, punctuality is such a problem. It continues to be a problem among our people. We're going to be talking about next week because this is the beginning of the year. We are hoping that some people will add punctuality to their resolution. So that's why we are discussing punctuality mm -hmm. next week. So Nia, so you can announce that in French and we'll go to uh, Ronald. We have nine minutes to go, but we needed to share those videos. Merci, madame. La semaine prochaine, notre sujet, c'est la ponctualité. Est-ce que vous êtes souvent en retard pour les choses? Est-ce que vous programmez quelque chose à 16 heures qui commence à 18 heures? Donc, c'est le problème de, de, de tout le monde en Afrique, je crois. Donc, nous espérons euh, discuter ce, ce sujet la semaine prochaine. Merci beaucoup. And uh, now, brother Ronald, uh, Donald, is it Donald Ronald? Keep mixing Ronald. up. Ronald. <laughs> Ronald, yes. So, um, talking about 2021, and crossing the bridge over to 2022, what has been your greatest motivation, if I can prompt you into that? Oh, my greatest motivation has been to join a mission for Africans and Caribbean immigrants to open up a public forum between African Americans and African immigrants and Caribbean. Also, my motivation is also to um, do good in school. And my top motivation is to be a commissioner on that program. Good. Uh, let, yeah. me just, let me just share some information about the run. I have not shared that. Okay. All right. With the work you're doing with the uh, African and uh, Caribbean uh, organization, I would urge you to visit africasbrainbank.org, our sister organization, uh, because it's a repository of people of uh, all people of African descent. You know where we are banking the brains. We we are not a bank. I can't tell you how many people have tried to contact us thinking we're a commercial bank. We're not a commercial bank. We have that disclaimer. We are not. We are brain. We are banking uh, human uh, Africa's brain power, intellectual capital, and intellectual property. Uh, it's a good thing you're already doing that. I would encourage you to go to our website and uh, uh, fill out a form there, send us some information so that you can, you, we can all collaborate. Our motto for the organization is uh, collaboration, development, and service. Together, we will end, the vision is to end the brain drain. That's the vision. Niasa. Thank you. Not a bit, c'est d'arrêter ou de mettre fin à cette situation où les Africains émigre pour les autres continents, croyant que, euh, que, que c'est plus vert là-bas qu'en qu Afrique, alors qu'en Afrique, c'est mieux qu'ailleurs. Qu ailleurs. Donc, c'est mieux de rester en Afrique et faire ce que vous pouvez faire en Afrique au lieu de croire qu'en allant vers d'autres pays, vous allez trouver le, me le meilleur. No. So, please, that said, thank you so much, uh, Reverend Pam. Thank you, Brother Ronald. And uh, talking about transitioning into 2022. It's been a, a, a great expectation for me personally, because I believe that 2022 will bring better things than 2021 or 2020 have been. So I look forward with a lot of enthusiasm, with a lot, a lot of hope for 2022. But we're not yet concluding, we're still here. So talking about resolutions and uh, during the, uh, the videos, a friend who 
uh, has the means but cannot join the program, texted me to say, well, you see, my new year resolution is to stay in touch with as many of my friends and brothers and sisters than I've ever done in my life because awesome. I was missing out on a lot of people. I told him that is the greatest thing to do. Now you started with me, keep going. I will always reply to your text or to pick up your phone call. Don't hesitate. So that was somebody at least who was touched by our conversation. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Great. Awesome. And, and one of the good things that has happened with this pandemic, even though we're not talking about good things, we're talking about lessons, is, you know, because of the video conferencing, a lot of people are getting in touch with each yes. other. You yes. know, even our services, and I would like to say this, you know, this is the first time ever where I usually spend New Year's Eve in service, but it is the first time where we had back to back to back service. Today's only the second, and we've had three services. Friday night, New Year's Eve, we had a service crossing over, you know, to count down to the 2022. Saturday morning, we had a New Year's service, and today we had a Sunday service. So that was such a blessing to me because that's three services in a row. You know, and there is nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. There is nothing. I mean, that is the greatest high. If you've never tried it, try it. I'm telling try you, it. it takes you to a level where you don't even have time to hear noise. You don't even have time to feel pain. You don't have time to be dist distracted because you are right up there. You know, it's good. That I'm, I'm telling you, it's hard to even explain the feeling, but try it. That's the best place to be. Yeah, that's so. right. Yeah. That's right. Thank you so much for that. And it is not just that, but also as we draw the curtain, now I think we can take the round of the table. As mm -hmm. we start with Brother Ronald, please. Uh, your last word on the program, you can be as long as you want to be. Oh, my last word is that I am so happy that I joined on Africa Online Media Corporation because they are doing you are doing a great job with the people on the continent and spread the word throughout the diaspora. Yeah. And I'm just so happy about that to be a part. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll be here to next week and looking forward to seeing you because we'll be discussing punctuality. As uh, Do we have uh, time at uh, punctuality issues in Haiti and in other parts of the, of the country where you've been? Or is it unique to Africans and people of African in origin? In the United States, we have a problem with punctuality. <laughs> um, Everywhere. It's a global yeah. problem. Okay. So I have a friend who says he'll be to my house at 3 o'clock. And 3 o'clock, that's when he's leaving out the door to come to my house. So he yeah. doesn't get to my house at like 5 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. funny. That's funny. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of black people have that problem. Yeah. It, uh, uh, we're going to be talking about that, but I'm proud to say I'm not one of those people. I don't have that problem. Me I, 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 I really don't. This is the truth. Yeah. When, when I'm traveling, I get to the airport two hours before my flight takes off. When I'm going to a meeting, I go at least 30 minutes before time. Yeah. If I'm ever late for a meeting, it's because of something beyond my control. I cannot, I can't even remember. Maybe it's happened. I can't really remember because I don't like to be stressed. I like to do things in advance. I, 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 that God has a sense of humor. The people he's brought to my life, a lot of them are last minute people. I have to just keep reminding myself that everybody doesn't have to be like me, that I cannot stand last minute things. I really cannot. And, and I start my events on time. Everybody who knows me knows that. I start my events on time. There's no reason to punish people that come on time and reward people that come late. So we're going to be talking about that. But my last word, Nia Song, because we have one minute yes. or less. Yeah, I, I was it, coming to that. <laughs> no, I know. I'm yeah. just I'm just getting into it. My last word is, you know, my resolution is sola fide, you know, faith only, stay with my faith. And I would like to encourage everybody, you know, that um, don't repeat, let's not repeat our mistakes from the past. Let's love one another and be a blessing to other. And last but not least, go to africaonlinetv.org and make a donation toward this ball hole. I can assure you, many lives will be saved because of your donation. Go and make your donation today. 
Uh, Brother Ronald, I want to encourage you share the, 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 the information on this program. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, and I invite somebody. This, pro this show belongs to all of us. It doesn't belong to any one person. Invite other people to join. As you can see, it's unscripted. You know, Niasom. Thank you very much. As we draw the curtain on the program today, I want to thank Brother Ronald for coming in. I want to thank Reverend Palm as always. And I thank myself for, well, I thank him first, the of man course. up there, because mm -hmm. for giving me the strength to be able to do this every week. Thank yeah, you correct. all. And please, let's take the date for next Sunday. I believe it will be the 9th of January. Yes. Seven plus seven plus two is nine. Yes. All mm -hmm. right. I got my arithmetic right. Okay, yeah. Brother Ronald, Reverend Pam. Bye. It's my it's been my Bye. pleasure. God bless Once you. Again, Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy we'll, New Year. We'll, we'll continue to play it till the end of January. Yes. See you next week. See you next, See you next week. week. Thanks. See yeah. you. Bye-bye.